Okay, we can start. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm uh, MPP uh, Mike Cole, the uh, member of provincial parliament for the riding of Eglinton Lawrence. And we're here for a press conference. Uh, just prior to the introduction of a uh, bill, uh, which will happen this afternoon about 3 o'clock, and the, uh, the bill is called the uh, Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness, Research and Care Act. Uh, with me today on the stage, you'll hear from them briefly, uh, is on my immediate right is Michelle Lafontaine, who's the chair and board of directors of the PALE Network. Welcome, uh, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, and uh, also on my far right is Wendy Molesdale, uh, who's a pediatric nurse practitioner, intensive care unit, Sunnybrook Health Services Center, education chair for the PALE Network. Thank you. Welcome, Wendy. And PALE stands for the Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Network, which has been in existence for over 25 years, PALE. On my immediate left is uh, Jamie McCleary, who's a mom and a PALE Network volunteer. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you. And we also have uh, many uh, members of the PALE Network here, many moms and families and fathers that are here. And uh, I want to welcome them all to Queen's Park to take time to be here today. Uh, the uh, bill that I'm about to introduce uh, talks uh, to a very uh, critically important health issue. Uh, and it's a health issue that uh, many uh, of us uh, are very uncomfortable in talking about. It's sort of a health issue that uh, affects uh, thousands of uh, families and mothers uh, across this province uh, and across Canada every year. But because of the uh, cultural taboos, because of the social mores, uh, very little attention uh, is given to this uh, vital health issue that needs attention. And this health issue that needs attention and uh, is crying out for attention is uh, infant loss, uh, which occurs at various stages of pregnancy, uh, everything from miscarriages to stillbirths to uh, children dying uh, immediately after uh, um, the mom gives birth. And there's essentially a real gap in terms of uh, the comprehensive approach to uh, helping uh, mothers and families go through uh, this uh, tragic uh, health situation. Uh, there's a lack of uh, medical coordination sometimes in a hospital, in hospitals. Uh, from uh, health practitioners uh, of all kinds. There's also a, l a lack of counseling uh, uh, support that is uh, needed very much by um, mothers and families who experience uh, infant loss. Uh, and uh, in this bill, we're trying to essentially put this uh, health uh, issue uh, on the agenda of the public to make them more aware of uh, the need to do more, to uh, help uh, bring research dollars, to bring counseling support programs, expand them for uh, mothers and families who experience infant loss. Uh, also, uh, it's an attempt to try and uh, bring uh, awareness to the media about this uh, issue and how it affects everything from mental health to physical health to uh, family uh, uh, breakup. Uh, these are the types of things that we're trying to do with this bill. Bring awareness, uh, bring some attention, bring some uh, resources so that uh, organizations like the PALE Network can have more resources, more comprehensive programs that are uh, easily attained by uh, mothers and families across Ontario in a comprehensive way. And uh, the uh, medical experts, and you'll hear from uh, Wendy Mosdale, who's a pediatric uh, nurse practitioner in a moment, but I know in talking to Dr. John Kingdom, 
who is the chair of uh, gynecology and the pediatric uh, health at uh, Mount Sinai Hospital and other uh, doctors who have uh, written letters of support. Uh, they all agree that there is a, a real serious uh, challenge here because despite all the modern technologies in healthcare, all the uh, investments in uh, prenatal care, and the incredible work uh, some of our doctors and nurses and health practitioners do, the incident of uh, pregnancy and infant loss is not uh, reducing. There, there's no abatement. It still continues to affect thousands of mothers every year. And the questions are being raised, why is it occurring? What are the causes? Uh, how do we compare with other jurisdictions, uh, like across Canada, the United States, in uh, the rest of the world? What are some of the best practices uh, uh, employed or uh, deployed uh, to uh, improve the, the health of mothers and, uh, and pregnancy? Uh, and uh, also give them the best counseling uh, if they uh, experience uh, infant loss and pregnancy. So the doctors uh, and the experts uh, uh, and uh, the mothers uh, uh, that I've talked to all agree that we have to put this silent subject and the silent suffering of mothers and families to an end. We have to allow for uh, frank uh, wholesome uh, discussion and uh, information about this uh, serious health issue which affects thousands of uh, mothers and families every year. So this bill, uh, if passed, would establish a comprehensive program of research in conjunction with the Ministry of Health. It would undertake a, a comparative analysis to understand the factors that may increase the risk of pregnancy loss and infant death. It would develop and expand existing programs to help reduce the risk of pregnancy loss or infant death, and develop and expand existing programs in Ontario to provide counseling and support for mothers and their families. There are programs uh, in existence, but we need more investment to expand these programs to make them available for people uh, all over Ontario, from Kenora to Cornwall, uh, from uh, North York to North Bay. And also, uh, we want to look at the best practices comprehensively in all international jurisdictions to see if we can incorporate them here in Ontario. Uh, and in closing, I'll say we have some of the uh, world experts in this whole area of uh, uh, prenatal care, obstetrics, uh, gynecology. They're all here, and many of them uh, reside just down the street here in the Mount Sinai, uh, sick kids. Uh, uh, health uh, corridor here. Uh, you know, we have uh, Dr. Matthew Sermer, Chief of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Mount Sinai, who agrees this is a very needed and overdue initiative, which he supports. Uh, Dr. Gareth uh, Seward, uh, who's the Professor and Vice Chair of Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the University of Toronto, says more resources are needed to allocate province-wide uh, programs. Uh, uh, and also to support uh, mothers and families and fathers through this emotional traumatic journey. Uh, and also from uh, Dr. Prakash Shah, who is a professor of the Department of Pediatrics Institute of Health Policy Management at Mount Sinai, he says, I believe that the strength of the proposed bill uh, that is before us here lies in its two-pronged approach, uh, commitment to preventative strategies and support for those who have experienced miscarriage of stillbirth. So the Medical experts uh, all think that there needs to be attention given to this, as I keep saying, it's a serious health issue uh, that needs resources. The good news is that already I've had discussions with many of my colleagues here at Queen's Park, a lot of MPPs from all parties. I've also talked to the Ministry of Health, Dr. Eric Hoskins, uh, who's very supportive of this initiative. In fact, uh, we already have the invitation to have a meeting with some of the uh, leading experts uh, in this field from the medical community, along with uh, members of the PALE Network, to sit down with the top bureaucrats in the Ministry of Health to try and come up with some immediate steps we can take to start to coordinate some of these responses and to find out where the gaps are and to hear from the uh, people on the ground, like some of the people here, but what can be done immediately 
even before this bill uh, goes through all its stages. And, uh, and the last comment I'll make is uh, I've had a number of these bills uh, brought before, over 25, 30 bills I've introduced. A number of them have become law. Some of them become a law unto themselves and are passed as the direct bills. Uh, sometimes the government uh, will take the ideas out of this bill and incorporate it into their mandate without the bill actually passing. So this is a great opportunity for all of us to put this important health issue on the uh, radar of our health ministry officials, of the media, of the public, so we stop the suffering in silence and we get people the support they deserve and the supports they need to get through this uh, life-altering uh, experience for many mothers and uh, families. So I thank you for uh, listening and I thank everybody for being